Hey everybody, it's Sergeant Soldier, and uh, uh, I've had a hell of a week. Um, I, I I discovered the uh, meaning of neuropathy, and uh, boy, my feet were burning, and I finally got on some gabapentin. I think that's what it's called, and uh, it's really <laughs> taking the edge off. Felt like somebody poured paste picante sauce in my socks for about two weeks. It's pretty brutal. And I wasn't, I was, uh, I got a little comfort out of deciding what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to showcase some of the uh, ideas I got from Tony over at Analog Toys about Action Man. I, you know, I didn't know that G.I. Joe was called that in England. I'm, I, I've become very fascinated by it. I did some spinners where I showed all of my, kind of my Action Man, uh, slash, uh, Falcone creations that I was able to make out of, uh, just pretty much off the shelf, off of Cotswold in a lot of cases. And uh, I've got a couple of these that I've got uh, two of them. Uh, and I can sell the uniform to put on your own figure because I don't, I don't want to give up any of my uh, vintage heads that I used. Um, and I did, I did some custom work here and there. And I'm going to showcase those tonight. So sit back and uh, I hope you enjoy the show. I'm going to piece this together, probably have it out by morning. And, uh, because, uh, I've, I've got a lot of pain relief and I've got a lot of energy built up to create something and show, show off some things that I've done in the past, but I'm going to do it talking this time, uh, just kind of sitting in my chair. So I'll be right back with, uh, my first feature. All right. Next up. We have what most of us here in the United States know as Destro, but I've made what's called the Jackal in the uh, Action Man series. Um, he's carrying one of the, actually the prototype for the laser pointer pistol that we uh, uh, got made. I think it's still working. Yeah, it's still got a battery in it. And uh, let's go ahead and take that out of his hand. It's got a scope on it, like a Han Solo blaster. It does fit in the kind of rubberized holster that I've got on him. No idea where this came from. I had to cut the bottom out of this thing for it to fit properly, and even now I'm having trouble getting it, that sucker in there. But he's wearing a pair of black fatigues from Cotswold, this is the yellow part in here is one of the, it's not a dicky, but it's one of the, uh, like MP, uh, and, uh, army sn it snaps on the back. He's wearing a red turtleneck. The hat is secured on with blue tape. And that is, and I will put a, you know, the link in the description. That is a banjo man, uh, lifeguard, I think it's lifeguards or grenadier guards. British hat without the emblem on it, and it kind of goes great with the uniform, I think. I love the way that looks. There was, he's got a bad rub on the on the chrome, and that's one of the, like, uh, I guess early 2000s Pawtucket uh, G.I. Joe line, where they kind of just one-six scaled everybody from the Cobra Commander and everything. I love it. Um... That looks like it's a Han Solo belt, um, but I painted the hands. They were like a gray color, and uh, even the sticky, I was like, yeah, good, that's good. The sticky's gone off, and that paint's holding up pretty good, but the black fatigues over that looked real good. The chain came from when these laser pointers, uh, when, I got, when I got those, they um, had a like a ruby red sequin inside of them, so uh, I took the um, I believe, where did I get that? It's from the Doctor Strange figure from I believe uh, Captain Scarlet, 
and and that line uh, they they had like face change in, but that chain came with it had like a a bunch of stuff on, but I cut them all off. And there's a little red ruby that I glued on top of that sequin to make his chain that he wears. And is kind of, I don't know, famous for you. I think he's Scottish. And uh, anyway, it was spinner on, get him all the way around. I don't think I have anything else for him except for that prototype pistol. He is in my world the arms dealer to whoever steps up, both G.I. Joe. Uh, Action Man and Cobra and Red Shadow and all that. He'll sell to anybody that'll buy. I like putting him in videos and stuff like that that uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, one painted up for Cobra and one painted up for G.I. Joe. He'll sell to anybody. Anyway, that is my, uh, I guess, my interpretation of Jackal more than it is uh, Destro. But, you know, I kind of, it's kind of neat to know him as both now because I didn't know that before. Anyway, that is, I have just one of these. And, uh, okay, on to the next. All right, this is one of my Furions. I, uh, kind of sculpted this head. It was one of the 40th anniversary that I've shaved the headline on. Painted the uh, face white, uh, red, white eyebrows, and this is kind of a more of a falcone out of Brazil and Estrella, uh, a kind of inspiration. Oh, the little hat was a. Um, I got it from Cotswold. It's a Luftwaffe hat that I painted black, added the red, and trimmed the gold and all that, and I, you know. It, it, it was going to be completely red on top and all black on the bottom, more for what would you call the black major. And but I wanted to have more of a falcon look, and so because I was fascinated by the fact that the, when they got their interpretation would paint them blue and red and all kinds of different colors, and not just a standard GI Joe. And that's Greg Brown. Uh, be influencing all this because this is obviously a super soldier or a uh, super Joe suit. I've got a laser sword. I love it that they're kind of the duelists and enforcers in my world of uh, G.I. Joe and Cobra and Red Shadow and kind of, is it inner earth or is it outer space? He, uh, they are like an interpretation of clones and that's why they have a red color because it will help them in the environment they're in and outer space or inner space and whatever it is. But I, I did, I painted them red. Now, when you do paint these, they get kind of sticky on the inside for some reason. It's, it's got a stickiness to it, plus the red. So I got to retouch that from time to time because it'll get, you can see right there, it's got a rub spot already. Um, paint doesn't stick quite to the faces quite as well as you would hope. But with the hat on and everything, that is, I have a, an extra one of these. Head and everything, full body, uh, for sale. Um, I'll take offers from the Axis or anybody else watching. Anyway, that is my, this is the, uh, the Furion with his, Laser sword, he's got a Luger inside of a red shoulder holster, also Cotswold. So, uh, boots, Cotswold, you know, they're, they're the uh, tall cavalry boots. So, this is something you can put together, you know, on your own. Or, like I said, I've got it all together. I'm willing to do a, a, a trade. This would be a great character in anybody's uh, uh, animations. All right, next up, the Muton. It's another action man that I was very fascinated by. I was able to put together the uh, the head, the top, the uh, diving mat, the diving bell head top, and the the weight belt are vintage. The hands are black from uh, Cotswold. 
The uniform you can also, the uh, or the jumpsuit you can also get with Cotswold, tall black boots. Uh, the uh, lead weights are vintage. So this is a suit that I painted. And then these are, uh, I guess, you know, rubber baby buggy bumpers that you can get. Uh, they're they're kind of usually just like so skid proof feet that you put on the bottom of things. Same on the, you know, there's two of them when you, you can pop them out, and this 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 is just a they're screwed in and the perfect size. I had to modify the diving bell helmet to to kind of cut that part out so that those would fit in, and eventually I'll have the laser and like the uh, visor pointer, and I've got a an attachment that I can put on the top. This is like radar dish that comes from the sampler on, I guess, the G.I. Joe track or something like that. I've drilled the hole in the top just enough to hold that thing in. And uh, he is a pretty good match for all that. I'm, you know, there's some things missing, but I was able to recreate it in one six scale. Here he is. And one eighteenth, and those are green, but they get covered when you put the laser on. I want to have, hopefully, Jim Egner, the TK five sixty man, uh, print that laser and the visor up for me, and uh, get an acrylic piece to put over it, and then I'm eventually going to paint the stripes in. I got most of this one done. I think I've got that on backwards. <laughs> But th there's actually no head inside. It's just a post. Because, you know, why? It's supposed to be like the unstoppable machine man, uh, the android, the uh, android soldier that's unstoppable uh, through Red Shadow in the Action Man land. So I got a, uh, you know, they, they just repainted a diving bell, uh, diver and put these things on. And I don't have the attachments. This was, uh, again, a part of a, uh, a, uh, a figure and uh, you know the hands on this one are red instead of black like I've got them but I like the way that the ones I like doing you know turning a 1 18th to a 1 6 anyway that's my muton I have one of these uh, extra already painted up and ready to go I can uh, make a trade, uh, uh, just mainly all the equipment uh, and the tall black boots, everything but the figure inside I uh, have extra. So I did make two of these, so beware of that. All right, now, here's the figure I've been wanting to do. This is one of my favorite custom builds. It is off the shelf and some handmade items. I uh, used, for instance, this is a self-adhesive felt that I cut out into the shape of a book. It does have some pages in it, and this is the Black Major's kind of secret code book. I haven't written or printed anything in there yet, but I do plan to. He's wearing low boots, a black fatigue set from Cotswold. This is a pouch, which I keep... It'll hold the uh, red code books. I thought that was neat. Um, the chevrons are had cut out of a self-adhesive felt sh sheet that's like, you know, a sixteenth of an inch thick. And then it's self-adhesive, so it went on and pasted it on to the... I thought it did a real good job of matching the original, which... And he's got the skull on there, and which I've cut out they have an armband at Cotswold and I cut that out and pasted that on there that just made that real easy and what this is made out of is it's the uh, World War One German body armor it used to have a like a crotch protector on there but I you can cut that part out and the the hat is a Luftwaffe hat which I painted with a shiny black I even did the Dirty Bird and painted the top black because like in the original, they just painted a uh, uh, an army commander, uh, repainted him 
with that red top like an MP hat, uh, uh, the British MP hat. And this, you can also get a, a, this made in cloth by Banjo Man 1000 on eBay out of England. The head is a vintage, and he usually carries, when he comes with the 118th, he comes with an, an uh, AK-47. But for so I had a couple of STG-44s laying around that I think look really cool on him, you know, instead of an AK. I think that yeah, it kind of makes more sense to put him with that Luftwaffe hat. Now, I have a, another one that I've made. So I have two of these for trade or sale. Black hands from Cotswold also. Um, for trade or sale. But I've used one of these sets. And not the front because it's, it's too distinct, but the back. And it looked real good spray, you know, with these on there. And it's got the little tabs on there that's really easy to put some elastic on so that it holds on to the figure like it does on here. And it looks better than just pinning this to the... I don't know why I did that. I just thought it looked like something he would wear, like a body armor or an old cross. Because it's... Even on this, it looks kind of smooth. And there's like a V-neck kind of thing on there. So I interpreted that as... He's wearing, like, some kind of body armor on this. But I find him so intriguing that his little red book is the codes, and he's an intelligence officer and kind of a mercenary in the Cobra or the Red Shadow Organization, as they called it in England. Anyway, that's my 1-6 conversion. I really I love doing this. I love this figure. And I, like I said, I've got an extra one for sale or trade. You know, make me an offer. Uh, and, and uh, you know, cause I'm definitely doing this out for the Axis of Awesome. And cause I know some of you collect Action Man and they, they don't think they ever made this figure in one six scale. But so uh, I can either, you know, just go ahead and do it through Cosfold like I did, or I've already put it all together and customized it. And, uh, you know, and this is mine that I painted for myself. Like I said, a loop off a hat. But I've got a Banjo Man 1000 that you saw it on the Destro figure. Anyway, I'm running a little long on this one. So, anyway, uh, this is the uh, end of my Action Man uh, 118 to 16 scale conversions and kind of explanation of where everything came from. You know, that I kind of mashed together, it's more of a kit bash than a customization, except for when, you know, cutting all this out, making the book, putting the pages in, you know, painting the hat and all that. It is a project that can be done, but I've got it to trade. Anyway, Sergeant Soldier out. I hope that was a good, a good run for y'all.